All right, so welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. I'm Tarsha. This is Conversations with the Crawleys. On this channel, we do lots of conversations about faith, family, relationships, and fragrance colognes. Yes. And we do also recaps, reviews, of commentary, and commentary, I should say, on shows that we're watching right now. This one is all about the latest episode of the Never Ever Met season, mm -hmm. or excuse me, episode six, I think it is. Okay. So if this is content that you enjoy, you know what to do by now. Hit that subscribe. Hit the like. Request notifications. And share. <laughs> so that's my thought. <laughs> and we'll see you in the comments. Consider becoming a member and checking out the merch store. All right. So you know by now we do our scent of the show. Just to kind of give you guys some ideas as far as colognes and perfumes that your significant other may like. Or you might like yourself just because, you know, sometimes you want to smell Smell a little fresher than what you might be smelling like. <laughs> smell, a, <laughs> smell a little fresher than you want. Smell a little fresher than, right. So my scent today. The summer coming. <laughs> yes, especially with the heat wave that you, because here in Phoenix, we already hitting in the 90s. I think we hit 100 already. Yeah, or close enough. Close to it. So yeah, you want to make sure that 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 other stuff. So this one is Amir Al Oud <laughs> Intense. Um, Oud. It's a, it's a. I like it. It's a, yeah, it's a duplicate if you will of something called by the fireplace mm -hmm. um which is a more expensive cologne but this one is a nice one it's got it's a kind of a woody vanilla scent mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. nice and warm feeling mm -hmm. and then what are you wearing today i think I, this is the jimmy Choo. is this forever that's the jimmy Choo forever yes the jimmy Choo forever i like it because i like <laughs> i like fruity so like it has the vanilla yes. in it and then it also has um a bitter almond and mm -hmm. rose, mm -hmm. and then our, our mint notes are going to be our cherry and jasmine. Yes, and so put it all together with the vanilla and the amber and the dry down. Which right, yes, I know you like it, don't you? I like amber. Yeah, yeah. I like amber is one of my notes that I like. Okay. I have a few things that have amber, amber in, it. in it, and so. then this one I think was when we went and. Uh, when we went smelling, uh -huh. smell tasting, right? Is that a thing? So when we went there, this was one of the ones you were like, oh, I like this. I was like, yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> so if you want to, you know, wear something, so when you go into an elevator, it catches someone's attention, Yeah, I would say this would be one. That's a good one. Yep. All right. So you got the links in the bottom where you can go ahead and pick those up as well as Father's Day is coming up. So there are some links oh, there yeah. I know for some Father's Day gifts special. So definitely check those out as well. Mm -hmm. And that helps support the channel, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about this Never Ever Met, this episode when we pick up from your mammy, your pappy, and your cheering, not okay. children, cheering. Okay. We just slaying everybody. Everybody <laughs> getting hit. It's just shots everywhere. Everybody getting shot. Shot, shot, shot. Oh, my gosh. I was like, we never want to bring children in. Mm -mm. We want to keep it to the in individual you have in front of you. Right. Fight fair and fight with the person yeah. that you're fighting with. Don't fight with don't, the, don't the lineage and the 23 and Me family. Shit. <laughs> All right, but let's talk. You know, here we kind of talk about the couples as opposed to just giving a play by play of everything that happened. We kind of talk through the couple. So let's talk about the background couple again this week. They mm -hmm. they are winning the uh, the most couple of the house. The, well, yeah, the the most <laughs> obscure couple. <laughs> Oh award. my gosh. Josh and Shay. The only note I had for Josh and Shay was that he was tired of washing dishes for the third time. Okay. And they had cooked. Yes. And is it them that's still in the boom boom room? Who? I, it's between them and Aaron and Diamond. So I was like, y'all need to write down a list because cause Chris says he ain't getting in the boom boom room. Right. Chris said he ain't getting there. But he needs to get in there. Yeah, we'll talk about Chris and his <laughs> sleeping situation a little later. <laughs> uh, but Josh and Shay just, it looks like next episode, it looks like things will heat up for mm -hmm. them. Looks like some stuff is coming out. So Like they're about to be back in the forefront. Yep. All right. Not for all the right reasons. Not for all the right reasons at all. Uh, let's talk about, well, let's pick up with Aaron and Diamond. Since yes. they were the ones that kind of ended the last episode. Mm -hmm. And um, when we pick up this episode, they are finishing up the fight. Um, and then the sister basically is talking to Diamond after the guy, some of the guys in production get Aaron back further in the house or whatever. Um, sister's like, look, if he gets this way with me, what will he do with you? That was my thought. Mm -hmm. She also says no real man is going to sit there and argue with the woman. Now, if y'all remember the previous review that we did, one of the things I pointed out, one of the things I was like, when that first issue happened with Diamond talking about, talking to Jody and arguing with Jody, 
say what you will, but I think Aaron H did the right thing there by not jumping in because there was no need for him to jump into right. a fight, fight between. between his woman and another woman. Right. There wasn't a need. He just needed to communicate that with Diamond. But we see where he jumps into the fight with the sister. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I, it, it's not a good look for a man to fight with a woman, especially to the point where you're being pulled away, where you're, you're still advancing and people are struggling to pull you away. Like, what were you planning to do? Right. Because he's trying to indicate to mm -hmm. Diamond that he wasn't planning to do anything, but you were talking about my kid. So what were you planning to do? Yes. You thought people, what if someone didn't hold you back? You were going to be all in her face? Mm -hmm. Like, how far were you going to allow it to go? Yes. Was she going to say something that was going to cause you to do something? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't understand. He indicates to Diamond at some point in this um What's going on is that, well, it was her looks. If looks could kill, who yes. cares about her looks? You're not here for the sister. Mm -hmm. You're here for Diamond. Right. So if you're here for Diamond, then no matter what anyone does or say, because he even says, well, when I first come in there, she was saying that you deserve better. Okay, then show her different. Right. Your words, which are coming at her and being combative with her, mm -hmm. that ain't showing her nothing. Nope. So he does say he'll never hit a woman, right? Um, and then Diamond asked him, well, there was this funny part that I was like, Millie says she wanted to meet Diamond's sister. Diamond's like, no, mm -mm, mm, not this now. ain't the time. Mm -mm, mm -mm, nope. No, girl. You Go ahead, sip on whatever you're sipping on. Go back. Uh, but Diamond asks, why did he call her sister a B, mm -hmm. right? Because that word was flying around a lot. Boy, they love the B word in that house. So now... Here's where, for me, mm -hmm. this is another contradiction. Because he says, well, because she was acting that way. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then she's like, well, would if you, you, you... But then he's like, in the, in the next verse, because I think she asked him, well, what, would you ever call me that or something to that effect? Right. And he's like, no, I would never call you that. I would never do that. That's not in my character. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> You just said you did that because of how she was acting. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what if Diamond acts in a way that you consider her to be acting as a B? Mm -hmm. Would you then use that or is that still not in your character that you've already shown your character is able to slip and call the sister a B? My thing is this. If, if you can call people out of your name, someone just got to get you mad enough. That's it. And and that's what you're indicating by this conference. I mean, you even got mad over a look, which you just <laughs> you said you said <laughs> run the tape back. You said because and I have the she cut your, her eyes at you. Yes. So you said that the physical act of her cutting her eyes at you caused you to have an, a reaction, and the fact that she's saying that diamond she feels diamond deserves better caused you to respond and react the way you did. So you can say, in my opinion. Again, this is this is this is our channel. This is our conversation. We're ha and we can if, voice our opinion. <laughs> in my opinion, you're you're saying it's not in your character, but you haven't shown that it's not. Correct. I, I mean, it is what it is. Right. Because then later on, she, you know, after the producers, like, hey, can we can we talk to your sister? Can we pull her aside? Because this ain't going how we thought it was going to go. Uh, but she's talking to her sister, and they say goodbye. Right. And then Diamond says she just wants her sister to be there for her. And yes, I, I you know, as we okay. talked about last week, I had a situation, there was a situation with in our relationship where there was someone in her life who didn't necessarily care for me and thought I was the best one. But now they, they feel completely different. But she had to make the decision and she had to make the choice to say, I'm going to love this person for who you are and who you'll continue to be in my mm -hmm. life. But I'm not going to take what you're saying mm -hmm. to heart because she knows what she has in me, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you never cussed anybody out. No. Because people have looked crazy. Yep. They've said crazy stuff. And like you, really crazy stuff. <laughs> and you could have you could have just decided, I'm tired of it, I'm mad, I'm upset, and I'm just going to everything I have in me, share those opinions. But you didn't mm -hmm. because then it reinforced 
who you are. It showed your true character. Yep. Because if you didn't allow it to for you to get mis, you know, bent out of shape, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, then this is someone I can be behind right. because they love me enough and they know these people are important in my life and that they're like, I'm going to allow you to handle it. Yeah. So. So, um, so he does, uh, Aaron H. does come and talk to Diamond, right? And he's he's worried about whose side she will take. And he wants her to see it his way, which to me, again, comes off a little manipulative, if you will, or, and I don't want to say controlling in the fact of controlling, like we normally mm-hmm. hear it, no. but it's, 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 it's trying to influence. Right. Cause I get it. I you, get it. You but... do want someone mm-hmm. who you're coming to love to mm-hmm. take your side, right? but you want to take, you want them to take your side when you're doing the right thing. And it's hard to take your side when neither side is doing the right thing. True. Because, again, we acknowledge that the sister was wrong last oh, week, Oh, yeah, too. the sister was wrong, you know, because, again, if she's there for her sister, don't allow someone to get you out of character. Right. Don't allow someone to show one side of you that is not the best side of you as well. Right. Because you barely know this dude. And if you want to show your sister, like, look, you know, this dude is not who I think he is, mm-hmm. you coming off on him— you're pushing him towards towards her and yep. not against her. Yep. So so he does apologize to her. Um, he says he feels bad and um, says that he is in love with her. First he said he loves her. Then he says he's in love with her. And yes, there is a difference in mm-hmm. distinction. So mm-hmm. a little later on, um, Greg and Chris are talking and they're asking kind of Aaron where he is in their relationship. Um, and he says she's perfect for him, mm-hmm. which, yeah. Yeah, for like she, which is a perfectly fine statement to make. Yes, no one's perfect, but they can be perfect, perfect for, for you. you. Right. That's where he took it, to my opinion, where I was like, eh. Well, I think because when Chris asks him, there's nothing you don't like about him, and he says no, that's the scary part. That's the yeah. part where I'm sorry. There, there is always something you don't like about the person. Now, granted, they've been in the house for a short period of time, right? Right. right. Even though they've known each other for five years online, and, you know, I don't know how often they talked on the phone, True. whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But once you meet someone, it could be as simple as, like, well, she don't clean up the bathroom. I mean, he ain't talking about hardcore life decisions. There's a difference between just, I don't like this about a person and that's a red flag or that's a a, 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 a deal breaker, right? Yes. And I think I think to me it's it's an unrealistic and almost living in a fantasy to mm-hmm. say that there is nothing about a person that you're like, mm, I don't really like that about you. Mm-hmm. It's it, again, that's the, that's a different than a deal breaker. That's like, oh, we're not dealing with that. I can't deal with that. Yes. I don't like that, and we're not going to deal with it. Yes. As opposed to, I don't like the fact that you 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 have the the toilet paper rolling over as po- as opposed <laughs> to under, or you don't squeeze the toothpaste from the bottom. Those are things that I may not like. But they're not things that are going to cause a relationship. And to me, because we or even stop had, or stop loving each other right. because of how you handle or do something. Because I think in our prayer, marital counseling, that was one of the questions that they asked. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, this is this is this is a realistic view of your relationship because mm-hmm. there are going to be things that you're coming. You're two different people coming from mm-hmm. two different backgrounds, two different ways of communicating, doing things. There's got to be something mm-hmm. that you don't particularly care for. But that's not a deal breaker. Yeah. So, um, but he does say that, and he does say that there's nothing he would change. Give it another year. Um, <laughs> but then he says that he will propose by the end of this. Mm-hmm. So. That's what he said. So I'm assuming he got a ring. Or are they supposed to make I, a de- I think their only thing was supposed to make a decision if they're going to continue to see each other right. at the end of the show. That's what I understood okay. this to be. Okay. If this is getting married at the end of the show. And putting them, getting on one knee, it's not going to happen. No, mm-hmm. A lot of these people just recently met. Right. And they're I'm just, not saying they're still, you can But they're still working engaged. through a lot of things to figure out if that's if they can continue on as a relationship growing mm-hmm. as opposed to continuing on and now we're in death, until death do us part. Those are two different things. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. All right. So um, let's talk. Um, let's go to um, Chris and Sandia. Okay. All right. Okay. (laughs) 
Now, there is a moment it, early on we see Chris and Sandia. Chris kind of pats her on the behind. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, he, he at least, there's affection, there's connection yes. there. Yes, right? we're seeing them interact more, right. you know, be flirtatious and stuff like that. He does say that the sexual tension is at all time high. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, it is all time high. Right. It's some things I've been wanting to do. He's like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. And I, okay, can you tell me why did they show the men's bathroom door? Because he said, I'm going to go take a shower. And then he's like, well, I want to pound you or something like that. He's talking to Sandy in the kitchen. And then the next moment, they're showing a picture of the bathroom, men's bathroom. Door. I don't know. The editing was a little fast this time. We had yeah. to watch it a second time because there was a lot of things. So we were like, wait, what? It was interesting. So um, so he, he does say that the boom, boom room is always, always taken. He did. And we see him laying in bed with Sandia. Mm-hmm. And then in the and other the twin bed, and his roommate <laughs> <laughs> sitting over there looking. He wasn't looking. He, he was asleep. Well, but they, they they did ask him. Chris did ask him, hey, can you turn around? But I think he was still asleep. I think he, he might have been. But Chris is like, you stubborn <laughs> so-and-so. <laughs> He's all up in here. I can't make no moves, man. Yes, he, You're messing up the vibe. Because <laughs> uh, Aaron J. looked like he might be a person that sleeps with his eyes open sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, so there's a scene where he comes out, talks to the fellows. He's wearing the coat. He's wearing Sandia's coat. He's wearing Sandia's coat, coat. yes. Um, Greg wants Millie and Chris to talk and try to rectify. Because if you remember the previous episode, mm-hmm. Millie does call Chris a B. Because Chris, again, was like, hey, attention. I just want everybody to know I've never said anything bad about Jody. Jody's one of my favorite people. I don't know why he felt like he needed to say that. <laughs> It was wildin'. Yes. And and then to be honest, I don't understand why Gray felt like they needed to talk. This is the thing. She said what she said. He said what he said. Now I may go to Millie myself, like, what's up? What's going on right. with that? You know? And then if she could share it with that, I was like, okay, are you good? You know? But I would just some sometimes you just need to leave things alone. Right. When it's just like it doesn't make sense to start with. And you're yelling for no reason. You're calling people out of name for no reason. There, I feel like there's something internally going on with that person. And it doesn't have to do with any outside And again, people. again, yes, you all are all in the house, but your, your assignment, nobody's understanding their assignment, really. No. Your assignment is to get to know the person that you have been long distance dating for however many months or whatever it was yeah. and focus on that person. Everybody else is 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 uh secondary characters in your movie. Right. So stop stop <laughs> bringing the background characters into your movie mm-hmm. and making them a focal point of now your your relationship. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I don't know why Greg felt the need. Mm-hmm. But I also don't know why Greg did not stay to help mediate the conversation. I would have. Because first of all, you're asking a man to talk with your woman. And again, she was so heightened. You don't know what could pop off. It was It's, it's more safer for her and for him. Right. Because you don't know because of the intensity of how she felt about the situation, Mm -hmm. you know, how she was going to respond, let alone how he was going to respond. So it was just good to be there. And Chris was like, yeah, I'll do with you and Millie. So he kind of had an assumption that he was going to be there as well. That's how I would, you know, there was a situation not too long ago where um, friends of ours, we had a disagreement, Mm -hmm. right? And the disagreement in large part, you were more vocal about the disagreement. Mm-hmm. And this person who was a, a male friend of ours mm-hmm. was more, more, more vocal about it as mm-hmm. well. Um, but you and I, him and his wife all sat down and had the conversation. Mm-hmm. I would never put you in a situation where there is a situation or an issue with a man. Mm-hmm. And I just be like, all right, y'all work that out. I'm going to go over here <laughs> right. and, and drink some coffee. and Right. And the same tea. thing if there is with a woman with you, I would never just leave you there Mm-mm. to resolve it. It's not, it's not a good look. Not at all. Not at all. So, you know, uh, Millie does own up to calling him a beast. She's like, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. In fact, you want to know why? Here's why. Right. And we're like, okay. And he's like, look, Chris is like, look, we can fight. I get that we may not always get along, 
but I draw the line at being disrespectful, mm-hmm. right? And she says, well, I felt disrespected. Be Basically, she was like, you you asked me to speak and then you didn't want me to speak. And so that was disrespectful to her. That was his way. She f- took that as he was calling her a B. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and then she calls him a B again. Yeah, because he was like, okay. And then that's when he felt like, okay, now you're not making sense to me. Right. If you don't make sense to me, I don't need to stay in the conversation. Because say what you will, Chris was having a a conversation that was even toned or even killed. Oh, yeah, he was. For, he didn't have any animosity in it. No. That's the thing. He was kind of like, where did this come from? Right. He was just like, it was just really kind of taken back because we've never had any interactions that would cause, right. I guess, in his mind to feel like you would be so on, you know, high on strong. edge, right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he does try to end the conversation. And when she do, when he does that, she again is calling him a B. Mm-hmm. He's walking away, which, again, take note. Aaron, in his in his or a fight, ran towards. Mm-hmm. Chris is like, I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk away. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna exit this situation because mm-hmm. it don't make sense, mm-hmm. right? Um, she continues on with things like, you could never handle a woman like me. Right. Stay with the weak women that you you are getting. What right. have you? Then she makes a statement about his manhood, basically saying his manhood is small. Yep. What have he's you? Short. And okay, you can stay. You can. A man can only take so many sucker punches. But he's just like, okay, I'm gonna come after you. And he calls her a slut. Yep. He sure did. Now, don't condone that. Don't nope. condone either side. Really, neither side. Um, both sides are wrong. Yes. I will say that. As you mentioned, he was hit, taking hit after hit after hit. He was taking a lot of hits. And he said it. Now, is that out of character as far as what we've seen? Because that's the only thing we've seen. Mm-hmm. That portion may seem out of character, right? So we'll give him that benefit of the doubt. But, again, it was out of place, out of pocket for both of them. Yeah. Um, you know, she's making the state, making the insinuation that she's hearing from Sandia that his manhood is small. And something somehow her bank account comes into it and... It was just ugly, yeah. just unnecessary. It just, was just unnecessary. I, and again, I don't get it. I don't see where she felt threatened. I don't. I right. can't. I can't see. You know why she was triggered the way mm-hmm. she was. I. I don't get it. You know. Right. So who knows? You know. I think if they had to do it over, Greg should have been there. You know, you if, don't if they have to have the conversation because I don't think they needed to have no, the conversation. They, they didn't need to have the conversation for. I think it was just best to leave it alone. But see, I think this is where producers come in and they're like, "Don't you think? That's hey, true. Greg, I don't you don't you think Millie should be talking to Chris about this?" So sometimes, as we're watching this and as we learn about different backgrounds of these uh, reality TV shows, mm-hmm. we know sometimes the producer may be slipping stuff in their ear, true. very true, trying to convince them that maybe something should occur, which could put them back in these situations that's causing more drama. Yes. We don't know. But it was just so awkward and not so organic. And the fact that Greg left, where I just don't see where he seems such a protector. Right. That he left, unless they told him, like, hey, can y'all let them have the conversation? And again, that's, it's just that's, ah. but that's again a place where I would be like, look, I know y'all got a show to produce, but I'm going to be here. Mm-hmm. If I'll be silent unless I need to step in. Right. But I, I'm not going to just walk and leave right. my girl by herself. Right. That's me. Um, so then a um, little later, so Chris basically is talking with Sandia, mm-hmm. right? And Sandia did kind of, you could see that she's trying to pull Chris away too. Like, listen, mm-hmm. let's just let's exit, exit stage left. Let's get out of this situation. Mm-hmm. So they're talking and then Aaron H comes in mm-hmm. and uh, I think it was, well, Aaron H is kind of like, where did this come from? Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Chris is like, you know, this is sometimes how women feel. I'm paraphrasing, and if I get it exactly wrong, <laughs> forgive me. But he makes a statement to almost to the point of, you know, this is how some women act when they are attracted to a man. Is that what was he trying to say? That's kind of what he was saying. Because he, he was like, you know, cause when she they find a man a beautiful, cute, or when, cute, right? Uh, handsome or something. I was like, huh? Where do you get that from? I was like, 
Okay. That whatever that makes you may have not be upset. And that may have been the case. I, you know, listen, I know I don't think so, when we were in, no. in third, fourth, fifth grade, right? right? That's how sometimes somebody like she hits you and so she likes you. Right. <laughs> but I don't I don't think that that's it. No, I think there was some issue that I don't think it pertains to Chris. I don't think it has to do with Chris. I think it has At to all. do with her trauma. Her which trauma. Which we'll talk about. Or is she, is it really focused on Sandia being quiet and she feels that Ooh. Sandia is being controlled. Or taken advantage and of. And being taken advantage of. So subconsciously, she is trying to project and protect. protection mm-hmm. over Sandia. I hadn't thought about that, but that that could be a part two. Let us know what you think about that, because yeah. that, I think, is... That's the only thing I can see. That seems possible, yeah. right? Cause that I'll, seems highly possible. Because this, I'm just saying, in my opinion, Chris doesn't seem like a threatening man. Nothing about him is threatening. Because, right, sometimes we have triggers because that person specifically right. threatens us. But... We want to protect. If we see that someone is in danger and we feel like they're taking advantage of someone else, mm-hmm. we will project to protect right. them, and we're gonna sh- we're gonna show strength, saying because she brought Sandia up in this situation. Mm-hmm. Well, like how you're doing her. See, you're doing her wrong, That's and right. you're doing her wrong, That's but right. you're not gonna do that to me because I'm gonna show you there's someone stronger in here, That's right. and so. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Sandy is not having any problem with him. Or she's not expressing it. She's or not happy, expressing so. it. So. Um, so then a little later, um, Sandia does, uh, I think Sandia is talking with Millie. There's some other people around yes. as well, right? Mm-hmm. But Sandia does say he'd rather walk away than disrespect. So stop please calling people out on that. Because see, and this is where you could step up for your man. So don't call my man. She does. She does kind of get, jump into that. She's like, you know, we we calling people out a name. You can be mad, be angry, but let's stop calling people out their name. Well, and I, and again, she, she she at least is knowing has gotten to know Chris enough to know that if he feels he'd rather walk away than disrespect. Mm-hmm. Which listen, say what you want about Chris, but let's give him some credit for that. Yes, because there are some men who would disrespect and then walk away. Right. Chris is like, I'm not going to, at least what we've seen, Right. I'm going to at, may, at least continue make to make the, the attempt efforts. to walk away before I now finally right. feel, like I'm, feel like I'm trapped and I've got to push back in disrespect. Right. So, so yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's jump to, um, let's do Greg, oh, excuse me, do Jody and Aaron, then we'll finish up with Greg and Millie. Okay. All right. Um, Jody is, so we'd see Jody and Aaron talking at mm-hmm. some point, right? And they are, she's like, she decides who she wants to open up to. Um, She says she's not keen on opening up to people who are hell bent on misunderstanding her. Mm -hmm, Right. And he he agrees with that. He's like, yeah, this is kind of our story to Mm -hmm. tell is essentially what he's trying to get Mm -hmm. at. This is for us to figure out Mm -hmm. what, what pacing works for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of a friend of ours says, what is pace, not race. Right. 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 It is the pace of your relationship, not trying to get to the end point quicker. Correct. Um, so his dad has come to visit. Yeah. Now his dad looked like he may be five years older than Jody. I mean, than Aaron. That's what I was thinking. Like <laughs> they could be brothers instead of like Listen. father and son. <laughs> he dad. had that young glowy look. He did have that young glowy look. His dad looked like he, he got Botox and everything. He just like, he's he looking young. He in his prime. Like he had him like when he was like eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, oh my gosh! So he tells when his dad comes up, he tells his dad that meeting Jody has been interesting. Mm-hmm. He does also tell his dad that his, that Jody's a sexologist. And mm-hmm. like, okay, how does that make you feel? Right. That's he says that's interesting. <laughs> right. And Aaron says it's kind of intimidating. Mm-hmm. And Dad's like, why not? You play a player from the Himalayas, right? <laughs> <laughs> you learn how to do things, right? And because Aaron says, you know. I, me and my dad has such a great relationship. Mm-hmm. He knows about his sexual history and right. everything, which I thought was great. Now we get to see a different perspective of Aaron yes. through his dad, yes. right? And so now that we know that, okay, yes, I have a healthy relationship with a man. I have mm-hmm. a healthy relationship with my father. Right. And 
I can tell him about everything. This is, you know, what I'm going through. And for him to give him that kind of confidence mm-hmm. without being dapping him up like, yeah, right. so so what you doing with so it? So who you hitting now? Yeah, right? yeah. So I like the mm-hmm. maturity that his father shows in helping his son to navigate without taking control right. or making him feel like there's something that he needs to be conquering at the moment. Exactly. Um, Jody's best friend shows up. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jody does tell her best friend, she's like, look, that first date, it wasn't hidden. <laughs> it wasn't it. <laughs> you trying too hard. Um, but she's like, we're moving forward, mm-hmm. right? And then Jody's friend is like, okay, so, you know, y'all been rendezvousing, y'all right. been. <laughs> right, now she's asking She's him. like, y'all been. Right. And Jody's like, she says this statement, and again, this, I think, gets to why Jody, there's this this dichotomy or what might be this uh, contradiction, what feels like a contradiction mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. Jody says that she's a man eater, mm-hmm. that she says things like she want, you know, she wishes women could be like men where they could just mm-hmm. have sex and move on. Mm-hmm. Because she says if she rushes in, she can also rush out. Mm-hmm. So she at least, as far as what she's communicating, if mm-hmm. you listen to her, she sounds like she's communicating. She's wanting to take this a little more serious mm-hmm. and she's not wanting to rush into the things that might cause her to just rush out. She's taking her time with this. Right. Which I can understand, again, I can mm-hmm. understand when you led with sex mm-hmm. and then it fades or fizzles. Right. And so you ended up with nothing. Mm-hmm. And I get it that she wants to um, make sure she's having a mature relationship. Yes. And that she wants to know who Aaron is as an individual. And she wants to value this as opposed to just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Or, Which is good. Yeah. But the concept is still that you got to continue to get to know him, even at the at some point where, you know, the intimacy comes in. Right. That and pace that, has got to pick up at some point. It has to pick up. And then what she has to realize, what intimacy are you currently building outside right. of the bedroom? Yes. Because there has to be, become a point that that builds. But again, it's like the cameras are leaving them for like, oh, like they're going to be the pack of the punch at the end of the show yeah. because it seems like they're holding back this story because we finally get them see a couple of scenes of them interacting and sitting and talking to each other. Yes. Um, So the dad, Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron's dad, Aaron J's dad Mm -hmm. is in the kitchen talking with the guys, meeting everybody, everybody. Aaron H H is like, Hey, all right, it's my time to tell dad everything. He's Get like, hey, on my side. we're about the same age. Okay. And uh, he he says something. I'm like, dude, you. He says he looks at Aaron J. like a son. Now, how are you going to tell this man's dad? The person who you just met a couple weeks ago, just like you met your girl in person a couple weeks ago. You're going to tell this man's dad that you're looking at his son like a son as well. Right. I'm like, I mean, so. Listen, Aaron's father don't come like, to don't come to me telling me you look at my son like your son. <laughs> no, no, we're not having that. He has one father, and and he was like, oh, so you're that guy, right? He's, he's like, like, oh, you, oh, oh, you him, you him, <laughs> and he's like, do you do that to all the other men here? Well, I just feel something special about Aaron, and he was like, what? Again, Man. why do we feel like? Why does Aaron feel like he has to jump into? this relationship. All right. But anyway, moving on. I don't know. But Aaron, Aaron, what'd you say? H Mm -hmm. is trying to say, well, maybe I'll get him to see what I see between him and Jody. And then he can be looking at Jody for it. Right. And I was like, what? Hold on. You're going to try to have someone else to have your same opinion for you to be right. You're trying to get this man's father yeah. To side with you right. against the, the the choice that his son is making. I, I found that wild. I've never heard of that. Right. That's wild to me. That's crazy. So the other thing is that as uh, Jody and Aaron then are talking and the father and the, the, the best friend are there, the father says it's stupid for people to force their opinions on each other. In other words, it's a subtle way of saying yeah, son, he, he, he trying to do it, but mm-hmm. this ain't the way, mm-hmm. right? Um, he does ask J- 
Jody how com- the father asks Jody how confident she feels about their relationship. Yeah, it's a normal cow. And she's like, she's confident as long as there are no outside influences. Mm-hmm. So again, I think that you can take sides in this however you want to. But I think that, and say what you will about Jody, say what mm-hmm. you will about Aaron. Mm-hmm. I think that at least if they have the opportunity to grow their relationship the way that they are choosing to grow it. And he, because he's get, he's he's acknowledging that yes, he there are some things he's like I do want this pace to pick up a little, mm-hmm. but he's also saying I understand why we're moving at this pace. Mm-hmm. So as long as they are both on the same page, everybody else be doggone. Yeah, and he needs to know when he needs to voice his opinion. Yes, because like I get it. You see the other couples; they're they're at least engaging in hand holding or they're doing something. And I'm trying to hint to you right. what I need. Yes. Because you can't ignore what you need. Right. I grant it. Whatever your love language is, you're going to need that at you're some gonna point. You're going to need that at that at some point. And so I appreciate him understanding what she's needing at the moment. Right. But also, if you're deciding to be in a relationship, you're going to have to give the person a sum of what they need so they can meet you halfway. Yes. Yes. So um, now, again, and again, I saw someone commenting on one of the other Mm -hmm. uh, about how um, the chemistry between Jody and the dad when they were salsa dancing seemed like she was having a good time. Yes. That's something that. But again, that's just there's not the romance involved. So therefore, there's not the threat involved. Right. And who doesn't because. And because if Aaron, if we look at the first, their first day, mm-hmm. Aaron was trying to salsa dance. Yes. Right? But he just could not. But he could not. Yes. He wanted to impress her. He took a lesson back when he was in third grade. <laughs> but my thing is this, follow through. If yes. you wanted to impress her, why didn't you take classes? You knew we were going to meet her. Yes. So he knew that's something that she liked. Yes. So the father is just trying to bring some connection and lightheartedness yes. to it. And anyone loves to dance, or right? there's nothing, there's nothing in that. I didn't right. see anything in that, oh, but no. she was just, she was just enjoying. Like, can you? She said, as long as someone leads. Now she never said she could lead it. She said, I'm a good follower if you can lead. So he wanted to prove her, right? Yeah. Just like Aaron <laughs> wanted to prove himself. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay, let me see if you can really dance because you putting everybody else to task. Right. Let me see if you can. She could. Yeah. So. So the dad and the best friend leave. Mm-hmm. Um, they do say that they they believe Jody and Aaron are the realest couple there. Mm-hmm. And the dad says, yeah, the haterism is real. <laughs> so. Um, so a little later, all the fellas are talking. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, Aaron H. is like, all right, look, all the other folk, we've had some folks that have left. Everybody can be with a person. Aaron J, stop farting in the bed and find, uh, build yourself a nest with your person. And Aaron, Aaron J's like, he called it what? His butt burping? Yeah, booty, burp, <laughs> booty burps, whatever. A booty I like, burp. I was like, okay. I've never heard that I've term. I've never heard of that term. And you will never hear that from me. <laughs> Sorry. Like, Mm-mm. and um, if you didn't notice it, when we watched this the second time, go back and watch it the second time, guys. Because when you go back and watch it the second time, Sandia is walking across the kitchen again. Listen, <laughs> what was that movie? Be- <laughs> Mr. Deeds. Y'all yeah. remember Mr. Deeds, the guy who would, who would just show up <laughs> randomly? That's Sandia. She's Sand- like, she is dropping again. Sandia be so quiet. She'd be, she be all over the house. <laughs> Um, so they basically are like, look, y'all got to push the, y'all got to get your beds in the same room, even though they really are in the same room. Mm-hmm. Just figure that out. So, um, they do move a bed, mm-hmm. right? Which I don't understand because where, that. where Jody is, where she now currently living alone, there's like five other beds in there. It, it just seemed unnecessary for him to move a bed. Right. So he can't sleep. Because, right, because the bed is in there now. Right, and they're, they're, and twin they're separated. Beds. They're the separated. Beds there's, there's, separate. there's, you know, a space mm-hmm. in between them, right? He's like, man, I can't sleep. I know it'll help me sleep. Let me get up and push this bed next to hers while she's asleep. That does not. I was like, this is a no-no. I was like, when I saw that, red flags were just going off in my head. I was just like, I cannot believe this is going on right now. <laughs> so the next morning, 
he gets even even bolder. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he's like, Dude. basically, if we could reenact, he's like, good morning. Mwah. I'm about to you about, uh, right hook to the jaw. About to turn your do hit, your do rag about to spin. I'm about to dot you another earring <laughs> hole, shoe. So, what yes. That? And so she's like, he says that he was out of character and that he allowed the pressure to get to him. She's like, she was disappointed, right? Mm-hmm. And she, a little later, talk, after they kind of get through that, and he's like, I won't do that again. He's like, I won't, I won't ever kiss you on the forehead in the morning again. Because <laughs> she's like, she's like that. She's like, other women are like that because of her trauma. She is not like that. She's right. not that type of person. Mm-hmm. So she does tell, like, remember earlier in the episode, mm-hmm. she did say that she she's, doesn't feel like she has to tell her story to everybody. Mm-hmm. But she does talk with Jay, jo, excuse me, Josh, Shay, and mm-hmm. Chris mm-hmm. about her abuse. Mm-hmm. And she does acknowledge that it is a trauma response for her mm-hmm. to be touched in her, spl- in mm-hmm. her sleep, mm-hmm. which makes absolute Perfect. sense. Perfect sense. You, you, can't, you can't doubt that at all, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. So, and she says that Aaron knew that. And Chris is like, well, look, I'm sorry. Not sure what he's apologizing for fully. I think he's apologizing just because he feels for the, for the, the whole, pressure. The whole gang, like, look, we didn't know what's going on yes. with you. We just knew we wanted to all be with our women. Yes. And he's supporting Aaron and saying, Aaron did say he did. Yes. He didn't want you to be upset and he didn't want you to be angry. But we were like, you got to find your own spot, dude. Right. Now we ain't telling him to push no beds together. Right. Nor did we tell him to kiss you on the forehead. But again, if Aaron has a need and he's feel like in some way, like I deserve least to be able to show how I feel about you. Let me try these little, which he probably in his head is trying to, you know, overthink that, oh, this should be okay, or right. oh, this just should be. Even though they talked about it, I get his feeling of want to show um, At affection. some point, she's going to have to give him a roadmap. Mm-hmm. We don't, now, granted, we don't see that. We don't know all of their conversation. Correct. But based upon just what we're seeing, she's got to give him a roadmap to where he can feel like I'm providing what I want to provide to you and you're getting what you need out of me. And we're advancing. Mm-hmm. But if if he doesn't have that roadmap, he's he's feeling his way in the dark. Right. By pushing beds together. Right. So and trying to kiss you on the forehead. Kiss you on the forehead. So um the other thing that she does, so he does yeah, he does acknowledge, Chris acknowledges that it was probably that the guy's fault. One thing that Jody says, and again, say what you will know about Jody, but she was factual in this, in my opinion. She says that she acknowledges that she's loud, but she's never disrespectful. Mm-hmm. And again, folks have come for Jody mm-hmm. in the house, mm-hmm. but I don't think that we've ever seen at least what we've seen on camera. We have right. We've not seen her be disrespect- disrespectful. No. She is West Side of Chicago loud, yes. No, but she hasn't gone gotten to anybody's business that we know of. Mm-mm. At least that we see. Right. We we haven't seen her interfere with anyone else's relationship that Mm-mm. we know of. Right. And so for her to say, and again, the field she's in, she has to be able to communicate and talk to other people to help right. them through their own traumas yes. or their own hangups about sex. And she says she had to learn how to deal and work through that herself. Yeah. That takes communication. Yeah. So right now, she's she's the one who's best at communicating what she's feeling how she's feeling and what she's doing at the time. You may not like what she feels. Right. You may not like what right. she's communicating, but she at least is advocating. She's advocating. All right. Lastly, let's talk about Greg and Millie. Um, Greg, I have this in my notes. Greg doesn't understand why she's being combative. Cause again, just cause we kind of covered it with the conversation with Sandia and Chris, mm-hmm. um, a little later they do talk, right? Mm-hmm. And she does say that she doesn't want to punish him for what other people have done, mm-hmm. right? Or herself. Or herself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she again mentions that she was raped, mm-hmm. but this is where it's like... But she mentions it to Greg. That this is yeah, our this first understanding. Yeah, this is the first time with Greg, right? Yes. This is where she's talking with Greg. Um, she mentions that she was raped, but she blames herself for being at the guy's house at 10 p.m. Yeah. And I, this is where a lot of times, and this is not uncommon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think everyone was at some point has blamed themselves for a violent act that has occurred. Or a violation. Yep. Yeah, that occurs against them. 
And I'm concerned if this is something that she has not worked through with a right. therapist. Right. Because... You have to learn and be able to change your mindset that it wasn't your fault. It could have been 1 p.m., yep. 12. It could have been 10 a.m., right? She mentions at some point about not having a place to live. When she moved out to California and yeah. everything, right? And so, you know, hey, I put myself in a vulnerable situation. But that doesn't give up anyone the right to take at advantage all. of you for at that all. situation. And I think if she hasn't had the therapy for her to realize that yet, that that's something that she really needs mm-hmm. to seek because it's not her fault. Mm-mm. She can't continue to blame herself. No. But she, uh, in that moment with Greg, she is talking about how she feels insecure. Mm-hmm. And that she can't, if she can't be, she can't be feminine if she feels insecure. Mm-hmm. Then she goes into that she doesn't need a man for anything. She doesn't need a man to be strong for mm-hmm. her. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And all throughout that conversation, just, and again, we are not therapists. Mm-hmm. We have been in ministry for a number of years. So mm-hmm. We have had some, ex- some, ex- coaching. some coaching and, and counseling, coach. right? Pastoral counseling, if you will, Mm -hmm. of people. So we kind of see things through that lens sometimes, Mm -hmm. right? And all this time I'm hearing she needs to speak with someone who can help her to navigate her feelings, Mm -hmm. navigate her emotions, emotions, navigate these things. Mm -hmm. Because I'll just say this. If someone, if if Millie came to us in a Mm -hmm. pastoral context, Mm -hmm. right? We would probably stop the conversation mm-hmm. and highly recommend and have someone on, you know, on speed dial for you, mm-hmm. for her to say, no, this is who you need to talk with. Mm-hmm. Because there are things that we're hearing that are like, no, baby girl, you still, there's some things you still got to work through. Mm-hmm. And yes, you say that you're fine, but your, your wording sometimes when you speak in third person or when you blame mm-hmm. yourself and those things, mm-hmm. those tell me that you're still not healed from it. Oh, definitely. And and not saying that you'll ever be fully healed and whole yeah, from it. Yeah, it's a process But you'll be life. functional from it. Correct. Right. You know, and sometimes she talks about, I do remember, and it'll come up sometimes mm-hmm. for her. Yep. And again, how the mind works. That makes, all those things make sense. Absolutely. And I think um, when those who've been victimized, and it doesn't sound like that person was prosecuted, Mm -mm. again, the victim is not given the resources necessary to get the help they need. Or the closure. or the Right, or the closure that they need. Mm -hmm. And I hope for her sake, um, when she starts to see this, and I'm meaning the show, right? That um, she reaches out for the help that you need, or the people, show offered it. Hopefully, hopefully they did because it's like you realize that not until you see yourself in a different light, like oh, I've moved on, mm-hmm. I'm able to get, oh, I'm able to function again. Sometimes it's a matter of your your living life, but being able to watch back and see you mm-hmm. actually see yourself, right, right, right. So they do meet with Doctor Allie because mm-hmm. again they have made. Um, relationship coaches and experts Which is available. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. She again talks with about her trauma mm-hmm. with the the therapist, right? With the doctor. Mm-hmm. Um so then, you know, she's the doctor asked the question of how did you process the trauma? Mm-hmm. Um and then she makes a statement some along the lines of, you know, when she would um as a result of that, she would sometimes curse and go to a 10. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you're kind of there still. And Greg's, and, and she asks Greg, is she kind mm-hmm. of still there? Greg's like, eh, 9.5, mm-hmm. right? Um, and she says that when, and so then when he brings up his trauma, mm-hmm. the doctor, she basically is like pushing it off, uh, uh, Millie is pushing it mm-hmm. off as if, see, I'm talking about my stuff and he, he just disregards it. He doesn't want to deal with my stuff. He wants mm-hmm. to talk about something else. Mm-hmm. And the doctor's like, nope. I am watching two people that have had traumatic experiences Mm -hmm. that can't be there for each other because they're trying to be there for themselves. Or they need to be there for themselves. They need to be there for themselves, yes. They need to be there for themselves before they can be there for someone else. I was like that right there. Well, because that's the point. It's like everyone was like, hey, I want to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I want to get past this. It's like they feel like this is something you can get past. Right. This is not about getting past it. It's for being there for yourself so you can continue your healing process. Through it. Right. And that healing process to occur, that's when you can be your best for someone else. Yes. Because the 
the therapist is trying to give Greg some tips of like, okay, you see her anxiety. She's going to be rubbing her hair. Mm -hmm. These are things you can calm her down. But I'm trying to share that with that with you. But you're being triggered by what she's being said. So it's hard for you to be there for her if you're trying to process what you've gone through. Yep. And then I was just like, Millie, you ain't listening. Mm -mm. Because if, if a man is vulnerable enough to say that he's even had his own sexual being victimized. And we don't we don't know that it's sexual. I'll okay, say this. We okay. just know that it's a traumatic experience for him right. at this point. Right. 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 We don't know what that is. That's true. I'll 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 take that back. It just is sense that because of the way he seemed heightened about what what she was talking about. And the reason it could, that it could have came off that way. Right. And the reason I can I can see how it can because that's my thought, but again, we can't right. put words in I don't want to put anything is because for men to say I've been through a traumatic experience Sometimes, because if it's sexual in nature, mm -hmm. that's something that a lot of men don't necessarily want to jump into and sure. admit, right? Sure, I um, get that. So that's that's why in our head, in my our, both of our heads, we're kind of like, mm, is it this? Right. But we can't say that just no, yet. No, we don't. We'll know. have to wait until next week to, to see. see what it is. But I was like, but if it's <laughs> if it if he comes up with a traumatic experience, like he got you know cheese on his burger, he didn't want cheese on his burger, we got problems. Okay, yeah, but. <laughs> I think I was like, Millie, you need to slow down mm -hmm. because you do have, a, it seems like you have a really good man that's going to be very supportive. Right. And he needs your support now. Just like you're saying, I've gotten past it. Then if you gotten past it, then you can be there from there. And help you, him get past his. Right. Because you can't stay the victim right. and have a hero. Right. Sometimes we want to stay the victim so we can have someone to be our hero. Yes. And sometimes we got to be our own hero and, and do the work yes. that it takes to be our own hero mm -hmm. so that we can help save each other. We can throw the life raft out to each other yes. in this situation. So hopefully we'll hear he's willing to open up so that he can help himself so that they can both help each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty much it for this episode. We know it's another lengthy one. Um, you might want to just, when you're watching these videos on this, because we kind of go a little into detail, you might want to watch one like 1.5 speed setting just so you can get, you can kind of get through it. Or, and you said that if there's some, and we certain got chapters, couples, yeah, chapters, we got chapters you want to follow so. more. But again, we're going to, we're going to take you at the point that maybe you're seeing your relationship yeah. is right now. And maybe you can find something that can be helpful to you and yours. Or if you have been a, a victim of a sexual assault mm -hmm. or abuse, tell someone. Yep. There's always an 800 number um, that you can call that is national or a local number. You know, And many it, times your job may have, um, as part of your benefits package, you may have some free sessions yes, as well. So. Yes. So find the strength to get the help you need because at no stage at or any age, if you feel like you've been a victim of sexual assault, tell someone, let them help you with the resources you need to Absolutely. move on. Absolutely. All right. Look, that's it for this one. Let us know in the comments what we might have missed. Let us know your thoughts. And we'll see you all next time. Have a great one. Be blessed. Bye.